Hi, Dr. Jolly. Thank you so much for uh, taking the time to interview with us today. Uh, so uh, we're all uh, very excited about the total trial. Uh, can you fill us in on the results? Sure. Um, so our primary outcome of cardiovascular death, recurrent MI, cardiogenic shock, uh, or heart failure within 180 days was not different, uh, 6.9 versus 7%. Uh, cardiovascular mortality or any of the other components of our primary outcome were not different. The key safety outcome of stroke within 30 days was different and was increased with thrombectomy. Uh, and so the important message from the trial is that as a routine strategy, thrombectomy is not the way to go. Now, you'd, would you still believe that there's still a big role for thrombectomy? Uh, you know, the, one of the major criticism of the prior trials has been that they be, they've used all comers for STEMI, you know, versus, you know, patients with STEMI who actually had a massive burden of clot. Uh, so what do you think the future for thrombectomy is from now on? Yeah, I mean, obviously we had a hypothesis that this would be beneficial. And so we were quite disappointed by the results. The, the question of whether uh, in, in a select group of patients, whether thrombus aspiration may be beneficial, it's a question we can't answer from this study. Um, the, when we've looked at the thrombus burden, at l about 90% of patients had at least moderate thrombus burden based on Timmy thrombus grade 3 criteria. Uh, so it's not a matter of uh, not enough thrombus in these patients. Um, but the important caveat is that we did allow bailout thrombectomy, kind of similar to tube, bailout tube, tube B3A, so that if you balloon the vessel, multiple inflations, and it remained occluded or reduced flow with large thrombus, you were allowed to bail out. So it's essentially a failure of your PCI alone strategy. So the message here is that not that thrombus aspiration should never be used. Uh, it may have a very important role when you can't open up the vessel in another way. And so clinicians will need to use their judgment, uh, but as an upfront strategy routinely, it's, it's uh, both the taste and total trial will show consistent results. Now, one of the surprising results was that the stroke rate was high. What do you, what do you say about that? On your, in your study, uh, the thrombectomy group had a higher risk of stroke. What are your comments on that? Yeah, so I think two things. First, uh, the overall stro stroke rates at, uh, at six months were actually quite low, so 1% versus 0.5%. And you look at the published literature uh, in terms of registries, the stroke rates are expected to be anywhere between 1% and 2%. So both our groups were below that. Um, so the patients did fairly well. But this difference in stroke was somewhat puzzling. And uh, one mechanism, perhaps, is when you pull out clot from the artery, if your guide catheter is not fully engaged, perhaps you can lose some. Uh, uh, towards the brain or elsewhere. Um, and so that's one potential mechanism. The other potential mechanism is how physicians behave, is if they have a tortuous vessel and they know there's a big thrombus downstream, they may have more aggressive guide catheter manipulation in order to get that thrombectomy catheter down. So these are potential mechanisms. I think the caution as well is the trial was not powered for stroke. It's a relatively infrequent event. So we cannot rule out the play of chance, and we'll actually we'll look forward to future data looking at this. So if there are other large trials, whether stroke is a signal in these trials. And one final question, uh, thrombus looks bad and scares all interventionists. What do we do to fight clot from now on? I think that's a good question. You know, what this tells you is that in a, in a large number of cases with modern pharmacotherapy, probably upstream ticagrelor, um, uh, and that in fact patients do fairly well. But that in a subset of patients, when things don't respond to, to standard balloon angioplasty and stenting, that you can still use thrombus aspiration. But it's, it, it's probably the landscape has changed over the last 10 years, uh, and patients are doing better.